I think that we can all admit that the holiday season can be stressful at the best of times. And during these unprecedented times with COVID and recent surges in outbreaks, we are all trying to navigate a new normal and leaving traditions behind or creating new ones. How are you navigating stress and are you being successful at it? Perhaps mind over matter just isn't enough. Today, we're going to explore some simple tools to assist you to navigate this holiday season, as well as those daily activities that can leave you feeling stressed. Hi, I'm Michelle Greenwell, and you're listening to Be Well with Michelle Greenwell. Episode three begins now. It's navigating stress and how are you doing? Today's special guest, Paula Nowak, is located in Ontario, Canada, near a little oasis that she escapes to on Lake Huron in the summer, and an acreage that she walks daily to commune with nature and build her energy and focus daily. Paula and I first met when we needed support navigating COVID and lack of employment. We began a relationship of supporting by sharing our tools for wellness, and this bloomed into a relationship that has helped both of us to see our bioenergetic wellness businesses grow and expand to support more people on their wellness journey. Paula is a former school teacher and principal who's been using Brain Gym and Touch for Health tools in her classroom and with her staff for years. Her desire to set up a nurturing environment to work and teach has meant that everyone has had the chance to support themselves and each other throughout the day to stay focused and energized. As an educator, Paula has her pulse on the needs of students, teachers, and parents to navigate daily stress and all that we've been experiencing this last year. Hi, Paula. Hi, Michelle. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast and sharing your special story. Uh, I'm, I'm just so grateful to be here with you today. As T has been a part of the chat so far, um, with the hope that our listeners are going to take some time for themselves to do a little bit of pampering. I have a cup of broken leaf tea here from Portugal, and it's warming my hands as I hold on to my friendship mug, which was given to me by a special friend and I use when I'm gathering with other friends. So I'm glad to be able to share this time with you um, in honor this way. Uh, so this brings me a nice deep breath when I hold on to my mug. It helps to center and ground me and helps with conversation. And I'm just wondering, what have you got prepared at your house? Um, I have the Power Pack tea that's from Cape Breton. And it's in a beautiful old china cup from my grandmother. Oh, that looks wonderful. What's on the side of it? It has beautiful pink fuchsia flowers and some blue and a little bit of gold and white. Lovely. It feels good when you hold the handle, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So <laughs> what I love about uh, the old um, tea cups as opposed to the mugs. They're a little lighter. Exactly. So Paula, let's, let's start off with taking back to your childhood and how you grew up um, because you have a very special story. And I think that this will be an important way for people to understand how you have followed your intuition but also how you've discovered the tools along the way. So would you be able to share this sacred time with us? Absolutely. So I am I'm the youngest of five children, and I grew up in northern Ontario in a beautiful community that had a couple of lakes. So that's where I spent a lot of my time. My dad was an alcoholic. And my mother was the main financial provider for our family. She was also challenged with bipolar mental illness. So my childhood home was fairly stressful, somewhat uh, chaotic and unpredictable. And at times my parents were absent or just not available for us emotionally and physically. And due to that high stress in my childhood home, my memory became short-circuited. And attending at school was really challenging. Processing was really hard work for me. So the really amazing thing is that I intuitively found some tools 
that helped me to feel good. And the three tools that really helped me to manage stress was being in nature. So we lived just beside a forest and we lived down the street from the lake. So it was about a five minute run to the lake. And so it was nature, it was movement and it was play. And if I could combine all three of those, then that reduced my stress level. And really what my daily mantra became, I just want to feel good today. And movement was that key element in helping me to navigate the stress and to be able to engage in learning. So eventually I decided to go to university and study movement, recreation and leisure and how that correlated to improving the quality of life and fostering well-being. So I've been on this journey for a long time and I worked at several athletic and recreation facilities after university and during university and my passion for learning and teaching about wellness and well-being just seemed to be ignited by this ex these experiences. And eventually I was drawn to a degree in education and that's where I landed. So just before um, we go on, Michelle, is it okay if I share a bioenergetic wellness tool to foster calm relaxation? I would love that. I, I'm watching you um, because you and I can see each other on this, on this Zoom call, and I know it's coming through as a podcast, but while you've been speaking, I've been watching, and the whole time you've been using tools just as you've been speaking, and I just think how intuitively and in ingrained in everything that you do it just oozes out and uh, and that's just really about what I wanted to talk about today so it's fantastic to see how you you live the experience so mm. please share something with us oh that's awesome so I'm going to invite you to cross your ankles find a spot and you can do this sitting standing or laying down so crossing your ankles in front of you and then bringing your arms out in front of you and placing your thumbs down crossing your wrists over top and then just patting or tapping your hands together and interlacing your fingers if that's comfortable and then bending your elbows and bringing your hands towards your heart center. Now for some people that may be difficult so you may just decide to cross your wrists and place your palms down on your chest in your heart center and just notice how does that feel. And we're going to take a few moments just to breathe. And just noticing the breath. We're going to draw attention to the breath for the moment. I'm always amazed at how the, the pace of the day just kind of disappears with this position. Mm. And how it just brings instant calm to the body. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to have you switch. Uncross your ankles and cross over the other way. Again, taking your hands in front, stretched out in front, thumbs down, crossing over your wrist, clasping them together and bringing your hands to your heart center or just crossing your hands over in front and placing them on your sternum. And again, coming back to the breath. You know, I was always looking for strategies of how can I just feel good today? And this is one I have used in meetings. I've used this in bed when I can't sleep. This is just a beautiful technique to bring calm relaxation to the nervous system. And then to end this one, what we do is we uncross our feet, place them on the floor, rooted into the floor, take your hands out, and facing your palms towards each other and gently bringing your fingertips and your thumbs together. And if it's comfortable, you can place your thumbs on your sternum at your heart center. Again, focusing on the breath, just allowing the breath to relax you and to center you and calm your body and mind. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So I know that you've got this in your everyday 
activities of what you do. What made you decide to take these tools to the classroom and explore them a little bit more as an outreach? Hmm. Yeah, in my early years as a classroom teacher, I noticed that some of our students, some of my students in particular, were struggling. They were struggling academically, emotionally, socially, um, in their relationships with each other, and even with some of their, their teachers. So I started looking for tools. What could I do to help support these struggling students? And the great thing is about 20 years ago, I was introduced to Brain Gym, a great bioenergetic tool. And I went to a full day workshop and that got me excited to share these tools with my students. And what I noticed if I started utilizing them consistently in the classroom, there were starting to be some shifts in behavior and more attending to learning and even some greater ease in managing some of the more challenging emotions. And then about 17 years ago, I became an elementary school principal for JK to grade eight. And I found that that job actually increased my stress load. And part of my, my role was navigating conflict in the building, you know, conflict with students, staff, parents, upper administration. And I just noticed that my stress level was climbing. And I also noticed that my family was being impacted as well by my stress level. So I thought, you know what, I want to study. I want to learn how to be more effective as a school administrator and also just to be able to manage with my own stress. So I started to study self-regulation and really self-regulation is about how well do you manage the stress that you're under? And that's our physical stress, our biological, it's our emotional stress, cognitive, social, pro-social, spiritual so many different ways that stress come at us. And what I realized was the more that I studied it, I, the more tools I actually needed. And I started to reach out for bioenergetic wellness tools, modalities, not only to support my students, my staff, my family, the biggest one really was to support myself. And I just kept building my toolkit of wellness and well-being tools. And that's really how this journey and adventure began. So, Michelle, I was wondering if you'd like to experience another calming tool with me. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Th this one's one of my favorite. There's lots of different names for it, depending on the modality. In Touch for Health, it's called Emotional Stress Release Points. So I invite you to take your thumbs and gently place them at your temples. And then take your fingers and place them very lightly and gently on your forehead, and that's, you know, just above your eyes, between your eyebrows and your hairline, and just ultra light, like almost like a butterfly touching your forehead, very gently. And this is a calming, these points are very calming, and it helps if we're in the stress response, fight, flight, or freeze, that this is really helpful in calming the stress response and helping us to deal with stress more effectively. So just for a few moments, I invite you to focus on your breath as you're lightly holding your fingers. And if there's a little teeny stressor in your life right now, I invite you to think about it. And focusing on the breath as you think about this minor stressor. What do you see? What do you hear? And what do you notice? Continuing to focus on the breath. Michelle, what did you notice as you did that? 
I notice right away that my back relaxes. My breath deepens for sure. Um, but my back just immediately lets go and where the tension in my hips kind of holds me sitting in a, an eager position to get going. I just kind of sit back and it's like, you know what, all of that stuff, will it'll wait. Hmm. I'm, I can just be present. So that's usually what happens for me. Wow. And, and you know, one thing I notice is that when I'm under stress, I'm often holding my breath. And, and I don't even notice it until I do something like that. I'm going, oh, I think I'm holding my breath here. And it, it actually allows me to relax into the breath when I do that. Mm-hmm. It's just such a beautiful tool. It is. <sighs> okay, so now that I'm zened out, <laughs> got my cup of tea. <laughs> oh, um, if we look at... What has happened since you left the school system? I know that you implemented a lot of things into the school system and made a significant difference there. But can you also talk about how um, leaving the system and determining where you want to go next, what kind of has happened with that? Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a good question as well. Well, I think that... Um, really these tools have meant a lot to me in my own life and have been very helpful in helping me to cope with stress and well-being and what I wanted to do now was to be able to share those tools with others so when I became an educator I made a commitment to be a lifelong learner and to serve and empower others in their learning and in my early years as an educator, I thought that my role was to support the cognitive learning of our students. And little did I know that the role to be an effective educator is to support the physical, emotional, cognitive, and social learning of our students and the staff and our parents. Um, so I continue to support educators and parents in navigating stress by accessing self-regulation strategies and, and bioenergetic wellness tools to bring calm, focused relaxation to not only the body, but to the mind as well. And how I do that is by offering stress strategies workshops for parents and educators and different community organizations. And what I, you know, again, what I recognize is I learned how, as I learned how to navigate stress, I also became really passionate about sharing these wellness tools and stress strategies with students and parents and families and, and community people. So it, it just comes back to my mantra of, I just want to feel good today. And how incredible is that if we can help others to do the same? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So can I share another tool with you? Mm -hmm. Yes. So this one's a great one. Actually, today I have a little bit of a sore neck. And this one is really helpful for having a sore neck. And it's also helpful when um, you just need to tune in a little bit more. So we'll just start off by, we're going to take our thumb and our fingers, and we're going to lightly place them um, on our ears. And if you have earrings on, to be mindful of that. So using your thumbs and fing fingers, and we're just going to gently <laughs> roll out the edges of our ears, Michelle. And we're, you know, we're massaging them a little bit. And we're starting at the top and working our way down, massaging and gently pulling out our ears. And I'm noticing that my ears are starting to warm up. So that tells me it's working. And we're going to do that three or four times. Again, at the top. I'm rolling, stretching out. I end up with goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, this is really, as I said, it's great for neck tension. It's also good for, you know, accessing, you know, our, our memory and our listening skills and comprehension skills. So this is a really great one for the classroom might also be good for Christmas time for me to do a good job of listening with my family. <laughs> All right. So how did that feel for you? 
Oh, uh, that that's, um, you know, this tool I've used many, many times. I, I absolutely adore this one because immediately the tension releases from my shoulders mm. and it, um, Hmm. It allows the head to just kind of float on top of the neck, which sounds really crazy, <laughs> except that sometimes when we get so much in our head, it's almost like our head sits down on top of the neck. It's compressed, and particularly if you're staring at a computer screen a lot. It's um, it's in a position that's down and this always helps to kind of lighten it up and pull it. Um, mm. And the heat in my ears always makes me feel kind of a little bit more alive. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit of alertness happens there as well. All those great acu acupuncture, acupressure points are so great for balancing our energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know when I've worked with this with dancers, um, this also helped them to dance on the beat of the music. Mm. So when I, and it was actually my adult dancers who, who had trouble finding the beat and staying there, or if they were really nervous, they would rush through things. And it, it allowed them to just calm down and they actually stayed right within the um, the meter of the music. And so it's always been a really powerful tool that I've applied in many different ways. I love it. So as you're going forward, how can you help parents to learn how to, to navigate or regulate themselves and to assist their kids? Because I know this comes through the education system and and it falls kind of into the laps of teachers as they're trying to deal with children from all different angles and trying to do the learning but as parents what is the role we can play and how can we assist them yeah that's that's a really great question you know and and as I said initially when I was learning these tools about 20 years ago I really thought that it was about supporting dysregulated students and you know students having trouble managing their stress and I also realized it was about supporting my own children and the stress that they were experiencing and and in the end it was also about how do I stay regulated as a parent so that I can share you know my so I can actually share my calm with my children and I could share my calm with the staff and the kids um, Dr. Dan Siegel talks about how for anything to regulate, it needs to monitor and modify. So really that's about awareness. And also it's about, do I need to make a shift? Do I need to modify and take some sort of mindful action? And really, you know, you think of my childhood home, which was highly dysregulated. You know, we were under a lot of stress as, as children, and so were my parents. Um, you know, that stress, that stressed environment that I grew up in really followed me into adulthood, which it was a blessing because that, that actually got me to pursue, you know, a career in wellness and well-being, whether that was in recreation and leisure or in, in education. So that, that gift came to me through my childhood. So as I researched these strategies to bring calm relaxation to myself, um, that's when I was able to share it with my kids. I was able to share it with the students I worked with. And stress management is really, the biggest part of stress management is being able to learn how to balance our energy expenditure with our energy rest, recovery, and renewal. And as parents, we need to be the regulators in the household. We need to be that anchor in the household. And what the research suggests, and I totally agree with it because I felt it in my body, is that emotional regulation actually comes from physical regulation. So as we regulate our body, utilizing these bioenergetic wellness tools, the breath, movement, Tai Chi, yoga, Qigong, as we utilize those tools, the movement shifts our energy. It shifts our tension. It shifts our stress. And as parents, you know, you know, now I have four children, ages 22 to 32. And really one of my roles now as a parent is to be that calm regulation for them. 
So as I model that for myself and I model that for them, um, it really helps them to be regulated and in balance as well and feeling good. And some of the keys have been movement for me, managing my stress, managing my tension. And as we learn these strategies, we can learn how to bring calm relaxation, not only to our body, we can also bring that calm relaxation to our mind. And it's so powerful as a parent when we can be the calm when there's a storm in our household or when there's a pandemic in our world. <laughs> so that to me is really the ultimate as a parent. How do I be calm, regulated, and taking care of myself, you know, putting my oxygen mask on first so that I can then care for my children. So some of the things I would say to, to parents is, Look out in your community, look on um, Can Be Well, the Canadian Association for Bioenergetic Wellness, for tools. We have some beautiful videos on Can Be Well. I have some on my Facebook, ba Facebook page, um, some videos there as well. Uh, so I'm just, I, I really encourage you to find tools that help you to be calm. And again, for me, it was movement and mindfulness and nature, and all of these beautiful bioenergetic wellness tools. So can I share with you another tool, um, Michelle? Yes, please. I all hope right. our listeners are taking all these in and writing their notes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. So this one is similar to the one we did before. We're going to place one hand very gently and lightly across our forehead. So we have our fingers stretching out to one side and the heel of our hand is on the, you know, one side. So it's just our palm is coming to our forehead like, oh my goodness. And just placing it there so lightly and taking your other hand and placing it on the back of your head. And we call that, you know, the occipital bone area or just right behind your ears. Again, very lightly. This is a beautiful one if um, you're experiencing some big stress or one of your family members is experiencing big stress. And I know my children love this when I can hold their head you know, the forehead and the back of the head. So I invite you to come into this present moment of awareness and just drawing that attention away from the busyness of the outer world and, and drawing your attention to the stillness and the calm of your inner world and noticing the breath come in and out lightly holding your hands as you follow the awareness of the breath. As you're breathing in, you're experiencing calm and breathing out, directing the flow of the breath down and outwards, connecting to Mother Earth, allowing the breath to ground you Just visualizing your feet rooted to Mother Earth. Holding your hands lightly. Deepening the breath. And slowly coming back into this beautiful space. How does that feel, Michelle? Mm. Lovely. It's like I'm ready for, uh, I'm just ready to sit with my cup of tea. You know what I mean? Just just to relax and be present. It's really delightful. I thought you were going to say I'm ready for a long winter's nap. <laughs> <laughs> Without COVID? Yes. Yes, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, one of the, the instincts is to put the hand heavy onto the forehead. So when you had said, put your fingers lightly, it was like, oh yes, because when you kind of go, oh my gosh, you usually do a little bit of a push mm -hmm. then to realize that it's just really, really light because we don't have to apply any pressure. So it was mm -hmm. one of the things that popped into my head 
Um, and if, if the hands get tired, it's easy to just drop the elbows down and just let everything relax. Because I know for some people, their shoulders will rise up thinking they need to hold and then mm-hmm. just be able to really let it melt, which is what I think this whole tool helps with is just feeling like you've melted and released. Yeah. And and I find too, sometimes if I have a table in front of me, I can place my elbows on the table. um, And that, that helps to take the pressure off. I also love to do this one in bed, you know, (laughs) laying on my side and I can use a little bit of a pillow to prop my elbow. And that is a beautiful way to get to sleep. Or if you're in the middle of the night and you (laughs) have woken up and you want to get back to sleep, it's such a beautiful tool to calm our body down and our mind down. Mm -hmm. And as you were talking about the kids, I was thinking about, um, you know, a lot of times these tools, we're using them on ourselves. Um, It does feel much nicer if somebody else can put their hand on your forehead and, Mm -hmm. you know, you can just deep breathe and relax. So for children who can't go to sleep, this is a really nice way for a parent to be able to participate or they're telling you a stressful story of something that happened at school or an activity they've been involved in and, and to be able to just put your hand on their forehead and and let them keep talking. And it just calms everything down. And it, it does take the emotion out of the event as well. And we've become such an active participant with our children or our grandchildren. Um, And we have a way that we can help, which sometimes Mm -hmm. I think we sometimes just feel we are a little helpless. Absolutely. And like, what a great way if you have a child that, you know, is a little bit revved up at bedtime. Um, I've never experienced that myself with my kids. With what, four children, yes. <laughs> you know, how great is that? You know, you have story time and maybe, you know, during story time, there's a little bit of beautiful contact there. And, and also when they're just laying down and getting snuggled and ready to go to sleep, wouldn't that be nice if we just held their forehead in that beautiful little... Um, comforting, nourishing uh, sandwich there on their on their head. So it, so many great ways you can use this tool, not only for ourselves and our children and, um, you know, our elderly parents, they're, they're beautiful tools that can bring calm relaxation to our body and our mind. Well, as some people I think are probably wondering, they're probably going, how do I connect with Paula? So (laughs) you want to tell them a bit about your website and some of the resources that you have or or where they can find you on Facebook? Sure. Um, My website is called Learning Infinite Possibilities. And that is the same name for my Facebook page and also my Instagram And one of my goals in January is to get a YouTube uh, channel, and I'm going to just call it Paula Nowak, just to keep it simple. Um, As well, I I do offer different courses, and one of the courses that I'm re-offering again in January is a virtual course. So wherever you are in the world, you can take this. And it's called Navigating Stress and Reclaiming Your Joy. And it's, it's a live virtual course. We've had a really great community over the last couple months navigating that. And it really is amazing how we can learn to calm our stressors and, you know, do, you know, create calm in our body and in our mind and how that opens us up to feel good, to feel good today and how that also allows us to reclaim our joy, which really is, you know, that's me in the forest, playing and discovering nature. And and that really is our essence is to reclaim our joy. So if you're interested in that, I would love for you to join me. And I include some tools on my, my videos, as I said, on my Facebook page and in January on YouTube. And I've been the lucky recipient, and that's part of, you know, you and I and the friendship that we've developed and the sharing that we've done with our tools um, and creating conversation, creating community. So I've been lucky enough to be in on your course. And what it's done for me from the other side, there's all the tools in there. But I actually, I'm anticipating class as it's arriving and it's on Sunday. So you know, Saturday, I'm like, yeah, Sunday is, you know, instead of, oh, Sunday, and then comes Monday, it's now, oh, Sunday, and then Sunday's my joy day, and that's just the word that I use, and then when I go to look at what is the task for the week, or what are we going to be reflecting on, I'm already ahead of what's going to happen in my week, I've already 
anticipated or set the goal or thought about how I want to feel in my week, not here's all the things I need to get done, but how do I want to experience my week? And joy is right at the top of the list. So I've mm. really enjoyed that aspect of flipping my thinking around because um, I can be a very task oriented person who likes to check off the list and uh, make sure I've achieved my goals. And so this allows me to stop and go, oh, but how do I want to feel while I'm doing that? So mm. that's just been a really great extra bonus. So I thank uh, you for that. Oh, you're so welcome. And, and you know, it's interesting. I purposely put it on Sundays and it seemed like a very unusual day to choose a course day. And the reason why I did Sunday, I picked Sunday when I was teaching and when I was an administrator, Sundays were my stress day. And it would be that anticipation of the conflicts and the stresses that I would have to navigate throughout the week. And I thought, you know what? I wasted a lot of Sundays. And how incredible would it be to set the intention that Sunday's my well being day? Sunday's my feeling good day. Sunday's, you know, my joy day. So it, that was really how. I envisioned it and the people that have joined have been just a beautiful, um, joy filled people. So it's, it's been awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then building that sense of community because I see it's really interesting to gather for joy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you gather to problem solve, you gather for meetings, you gather for educational components, whatever those pieces are, but you've building a community of joy and it's uh, it's a completely different reason for being there. So lots of smiles. It's great. I like that. I like that. The joy community. Yeah. <laughs> so Paula, thank you so much for sharing the time today. It's been wonderful to talk through all these pieces and have energy tools at the same time. Oh, Michelle, I, I thank you. You know, I'm so deeply grateful for you and getting to know you over the last several months during COVID and I'm very appreciative of our time together today. So I can feel the calm that you've created uh, with the exercises. And I've got that, you know, your story has really resonated with me. And so being able to reflect on it and thinking about the, the gifts that have come from your story and the gifts that have come from your experiences that have allowed you to reach out to people in such a profound way. I hope our listeners were able to participate in each of the exercises. And if not, they'll be able to go back and listen again. But uh, I just want to uh, put out there for the listeners that take the time with these exercises, get to know them a little bit and kind of make them your, your friend for different things because uh, they are very profound. And you and I both know from the work that we do and why we got into this work, it's just... Um, they're just simple tools doing profound things for us. And it's wonderful. So Paula, have a wonderful holiday season with your family. Thank you so much for sharing the time. Thank you, Michelle. Many blessings to you and your family as well. So Be Well with Michelle Greenwell is a podcast showcasing how we're a vital piece of our community, how our involvement with others in reaching out can change outcome and provide support. How taking the time to make a cup of tea and sip on it can change your whole day. And I think Paula and I have both finished off our tea. I hope that as you listen to Paula's story, it sparks some new ideas in you for actively supporting yourself and for supporting others who need assistance or where you can offer with some compassion. And to be true to my passion in life, as you head into the festivities of the season, remember to put a little of your favorite music on and dance in the kitchen. Find joy in all that you do and gratitude for those who are supporting and inspiring you. And that has to include you. Please celebrate you. Best wishes for a healthy, prosperous, and joyous 2021. Be well with Michelle Greenwell.